Okay, guys, here we go again. Um, I'd also like to welcome 10 VCO, uh, Miss Travis at this class today. Uh, she's uh, ill today and um, I'll be taking the lesson, so you need to do what uh, basically copy this lesson. Um, and I'll be, it might be like this uh, until the end of the week, um, so who knows? Uh, so just keep aware on what's going on and show my homework. Okay, so the title today is Venn Diagrams and Probability. So please, can you put a title of Venn Diagrams? And probability in your book and I'm going to use a few examples here um, that, that I've now so that I have set you on Hegarty uh, so eg1 this is a big topic at GCSE uh, Venn diagrams probability questions uh, and um, really really important we know how to do that so first example here it says a company makes a hundred bags 35 have buttons but no zips um, 35 have zips but no button and some have neither how many bags have zips on them? And this is exactly how the question would be worded. It wouldn't be obviously a Venn diagram question. But when you've got things with multiple things that um, there's some overlap, the easiest way to answer these questions is with a Venn diagram. Okay, so Venn diagram makes it so much easier. And we've got two options here. We've either got zips, I think, or we've got um, buttons. Okay zips or buttons on the bags and we know that all of them add add up to 100 and we just have to fill in the instruction sort of information as we go so it says I, you normally work from the bottom up so let's work from the bottom up 27 of the bags neither have knit zips nor buttons so 27 is going to go on the outside there okay then the next one it says 34 of the bags have zips but no buttons. So zips, but no buttons, it's gonna go in there. Sure, that's in the zip circle, but outside the button circle. And the final one, 35 have buttons, but no zips, buttons, but no zips, that's gonna go in here. Okay, button, it's in the button circle, but outside the zip circle. How many bags have zips on them? Well, the common mistake here is people might just put 34. But we've also potentially got some that are um, combined in both. So if I put that as an X, I know that they all must add up to 100. So I know that 100 minus 34 minus 35 minus 27 must equal that area in the middle there, the X value. And if I do that, I know four bags are going to go in the middle there. So X is going to equal four. So four goes in the middle there. We can sort of get rid of X now. Um, and therefore the number, so therefore a total with zips is equal to 34 out of 4, 38 bags. Okay. So when you're doing these questions, please do draw out the Venn diagram. That should help you with the first task. Okay. Right, the second task. Now, this involves probability. Probability. Um, and it's specifically given that questions. These are slightly harder, which is also known as conditional probability. So please put that as a subtitle. Okay. It's quite a long subtitle, but that does cover it. So it's given that style questions, which is conditional probability. Okay, now it's going to be a Venn diagram question again. Um, and this time we've got three activities. So it's going to be a Venn diagram with three separate circles. And my advice for these questions is to draw them really big to help you visualize what's going on. Nice and big. And we've got some people using the gym. Obviously, no one at the moment because of COVID. We've got some people using the swimming pool. I'm going to put SB for swimming pool. And we've got some people using the track. And again, for these questions, it's best to start from the inside out. So start inside out. That's the best way to do it. We've got 11 that use all three. So 11 goes in there. And I can tick it off as I go. The next one. 25 people use the gym and the track. So gym and track is going to be this bit here. 
That bit there is gym and track. So 25 means that must be 14 because the total of that must be 25. Tick that one off. 29 is the pool and the track. So swimming pool and track, that's this column here. We've got 29, so that must be 18 goes in there. Okay, tick that one off. We've got 22, oh, sorry. Sort of shut up. Okay, sorry about that. So we've got 22 use the gym and the pool. So that means 11 must go in there. Again, I can tick that one off. There we go. Oh, keep clicking on that by mistake. Okay, next one. 58 use the track. So that whole track bubble must go up to 58. So if I do 58 subtract. Fifteen is going to go in there. Fifteen goes in there. I've done that one. Uh, sixty-two is the swimming pool. So that whole SP bubble is going to be sixty-two. Sixty-two minus eleven minus eleven. Ten. Twenty-two goes in there. And the next one is seventy-two. Use the gym. Okay. So seventy-two. Uh, Thirty-six is going to be in there, and then my final bit of information. I always really work from the bottom up. One hundred and thirty uh, are in the GIF Sports Centre at all, so there's going to be some that don't use any of those activities. One hundred and thirty minus, and I've just got to make sure I don't miss any. And three. Okay, so there's three on the outside. Don't do anything. Okay, now I've drawn this Venn diagram. Now it's going to really help here. So, is given that a randomly selected person uses the gym and the track, so we know they use the gym and the track. Okay, now at this point, so gym and the track. I'm only going to consider the gym and the track bubble. So I'm just going to redraw. That is the only bubble I'm interested in. Okay, the gym and the track, that blue bubble. I can ignore everything else uh, in the whole Venn diagram. So I'm focusing on that blue bubble. It says, what is the probability that they do not use the swimming pool? Okay, so in this blue bubble, in this blue bubble, we have 14. That, you, that do not use, that do not swim, okay? So 14 do not, well, use swimming pool. And we've got 11 that use the swimming pool, okay? So we've got in that bubble, because it says given that gym and track, gym and track, I'm focused on that bubble. We've got 14 that do not use the swimming pool and 11 that use the swimming pool. So what is the probability that they do not use the swimming pool? Well, 14 do not use the swimming pool out of a total in that bubble of 25. So your answer there would be 14 over 25, okay? So they're given that questions. Now you might have thought, okay, well I didn't actually have to fill in the whole Venn diagram. But it is good practice to do that anyway, okay? Right, final question before you're gonna do some Hegarty tasks. So this is a quick EG3. So it says this squiggly E sin, well that's like an epsilon equals 100 stamps in the collection. That just means the total equals 100, okay? And A is the stamps, they've got 21st, 20th century there, and British stamps, and there's an overlap there. And it's another given that question, given that the, the stamp is chosen from the 20th century, what is the probability that it's British? And we'll come to that in a minute. I think we need to find out what x is first. So I know that the total sum must equal 100. So we've got x, x minus 6, plus x. all of these bubbles added together must equal 100. Okay. So if I tidy that up a little bit, we've got x squared minus 6x plus there's 3x is there. 
plus that's going to be uh, 60 and it equals 100. Okay, and x squared minus 3x minus 40 is zero. I'm just rearranging that equation. It looks like I've got a quadratic here, uh, which I do. This does factorize. You could have used the formula. It does factorize quite nicely. I think minus 8 and plus 5. So x is going to equal minus 5 or 8. Okay, x cannot equal minus 5 because it's a whole number. We can't have a negative number of stamps. Therefore, x equals 8. Okay, so before you've even started, x equals 8. I can now go back up and potentially fill in my Venn diagram here. So I know that the middle is 8. I know that's going to be 16 out of 32. Uh, which is 48 there, and then the last one should be 8 times the 16. Okay. I'm going to do a quick check on that, see if it does add up to 100. Should do 16. Yeah, it does. Okay, so now I'm right. Right now I've done. Now I've worked out the, the uh, Venn diagram. It says, given that the stamp chosen is from the 20th century. So given that it is from the 20th century. So with my blue pen. Which ones are the 20th century ones? They are the A. So I'm going to draw my blue circle around the A column here. And I'm not going to look at anything else. So I can almost scrap the rest of it. I can scribble that out. Only interested in the A bubble. What is the probability that it's British? Well, in that bubble, there's only eight stamps that are British. So my answer, quite simply, eight over the total, which is 24. Uh, and that simplifies down to third. So that would be the answer to that question there. Okay. So that is a conditional probability and Venn diagrams. I've set you three tasks. They they all sort of hopefully those three example questions will help you with those tasks. You need to complete those tasks, please. Showing full working. So you need to show your working in your book and upload it to the OneNote page. And I'll be checking on that tomorrow, both not just for my class, but also for Miss Travis's class as well. Okay, so good luck, guys. I'm on the email if you need me today. Um, and any issues, do let me know. Uh, but if not, I'll see you tomorrow.